Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to this hybrid accounts and today we're just going to take a look at the topic of working capital on working capital policies. So we'll be very, very specific on the subject of working capital policies. Now, what you need to know is uh, by working capital policies, it could be explained in investing terms, but also it could be explained in financing terms, but also by saying policy is that how had the company uh, actually uh, put in place the ways on which to manage this working capital? How the company do this? The company do this. So, first of all, regardless of whether we deal with investing or financing policy, we have to note all of the following: that working capital investment and financing policy we could use conservative policy, moderate policy, as well as aggressive policy. So let's start with the King Capital Investing Policy and take a look at what I can tell us, and then we'll go to working capital financing policy. All right, so let's start. By starting with working capital investment policy, what do we mean by this? Simply speaking, if you speak of investment, if investment policy, you speak of the level of current assets the company holds. Remember that working capital equals current assets minus current liabilities, but the gross working capital is essentially equal to uh, just current assets. So in investing terms, we just take a look at the level of current assets. And then we, we could use that to define whether it's a conservative, moderate, or aggressive policy. So that's why I say this is concerned with the level of investment in current assets when one company is being compared with the, uh, with the other. And usually when you deal with investment, investment policy, we compare one company with the other, not, this, not the same company. But when dealing with financing policy, we can compare one company at different time points in time. Let's say year one and year two, things like that. So simply speaking, uh, working capital investment policy is usually compared on an intercompany comparative basis. That is, we compare one company and another. Now, let's just go and take a look at both of the three policies, at both of the three approaches. If you say an aggressive approach, what do we mean? You know, when you are aggressive, is that mean that you seek maximum returns? Now, as, as you know, the relationship between risk and return is part of previous session. The higher the risk, the higher the return. So by saying that this is an aggressive policy, that means that you would seek a high return. If you seek a high return, that means you have, you also have, have a high risk. What does a high risk mean, mean in working capital? By having a high risk, we simply refer to the risk of liquidity. So if you have a high liquidity risk in working capital, that means uh, your cash position is a bit low. By having a bit low cash position, that means you have less current assets from which are uh, to sell so as to be able to set short-term maturity obligations. That's why we say an aggressive approach is when one company has a lower level of investment in current assets. So this is the uh, uh, total meaning. That means a lower level of investment in current assets. I hope you got that. But also, when speaking of the conservative approach, this is the reverse. By speaking of the conservative approach, that means no big deal. We just need, you just need to be conservative. We just need to maintain a low risk. So an aggressive policy goes for a high return that will reflect a high risk. But a conservative approach simply means a low risk. So by having a low risk, that means a low liquidity risk. By having a low liquidity risk, this uh, would definitely show that you need to have a lot of working capital, sufficient working capital, so as uh, to, to make sure that the company is liquid. The company can sell assets and use, can sell current assets and use them to, to set or short-term maturing obligations. So by conservative approach, we just mean that the company has a higher level of investment in current assets compared to the other. So this is what actually you should be able to understand perfectly. But also we could have a moderate approach. What is a moderate approach? Actually, this is just in between. Not too much investment in capital, but also not too low investment in current assets. That's why you say it's just when one company has a comparable level of investment in current assets to the other. So it's just like that. This is what uh, we speak uh, of when speaking of working capital investing policy. But also now we could have a working capital financing policy. Let's take a look at this. Now, 
is opposed to the working capital investment policy. When speaking of the financing policy, we just try and take a look at how, we just try and take a look at how current assets are financed. Actually, let me show one thing. Presume that we're just trying to show here the accounting equation. How would you do that? We say that non-current assets plus current assets, then if you minus current liability and the non-current liability, we usually remain with something called equity here, right? That is how we go. Now, I could say this, you know, this non-current liability can come to equity here and therefore it will be added like this. After eliminating something like this, you will remain with current liabilities here, but also current liabilities could come here to the right and we add them as current liabilities. Now, after having something like this, what do we mean? You know, these are the assets. Assets are acquired, actually, to acquire assets, you need funds. And on the right side, you have your funds. These funds are both long term and short term. Equity and non current liability, these are long term funds, but current liabilities are short term funds. You know, by having a current liability in your books, it really means that you use it to fund you, to finance you. So these funds on the right side are used to finance these assets on the left hand side. So when speaking on the working capital financing policy, we just attempt to take a look at uh, how these current assets is financed from current liabilities, or just simply speaking how it is financed. And to make matters more clear, these current assets on working capital financing policy are usually broken down twice. We say that you could have permanent current assets, but also you could have fluctuating current assets. So, Non-current asset is obviously long-term, but the permanent current assets are also presumed to be long-term in that uh, that level usually remains with the company for all periods. So uh, we just presume them to be long-term. So ideally speaking, if you use the matching principle, we expected that both non-current assets and the permanent current assets were financed by long-term sources, this one and this one, and the fluctuating current asset, this which is short term, was financing by current liabilities. But this is not always the case, and that's why uh, we have to take a look at everything. So before just going further, take a look at that, uh, I could just show you something. Just take a look at this. Uh, let me show the whiteboard here a bit. And let's say this is our line. Let's say uh, you have current asset that is permanent. Let's say you have permanent current assets, PCA, like this. And let's say maybe if you go further, you would have fluctuating current assets. Oh, you could start with, this is uh, in a permanent current assets. You could also have fluctuating current assets. And then uh, you could have non-current assets, non-current assets. None, then current, then assets. You could have something like this. So to finance non-current assets in the fluctuating, you expect to use long term and then for fluctuate. And permanent, I mean, long term, but to finance fluctuating current assets, you would expect short term. Now, how do we differ? How do we go about this now? Let's go back to our principle there and find out how we can proceed. So, simply speaking, working capital financing policy is concerned with the relative proportions of short term and long term finance used by the company. This is what uh, we concentrate on. And the assessment involves analysis of financial information for one company alone. Now, as opposed to working capital investment policy, working capital financing policy usually compare the same entity, let's say the same company over several years, or maybe over year one and year two. But as for working capital uh, investment policy, we compare two different entities usually over the same period. So as I told you, as I illustrated before, that working capital financing policy uses an analysis of current assets into permanent as well as a fluctuating. So before going further into working capital financing policy, you have to subdivide your current assets into permanent and fluctuating current assets. So as I told you before, when speaking of permanent current assets, this just means the core level of investment in current assets that supports a given level of business activity.
change. That means the level that doesn't change. For example, you are the company. You know, you could be having uh, inventories, let's say you have 50 million dollars, 60, 70, 80, but that inventory level has never fallen before 50, below 50 million dollars. So that means it's a current asset that is permanent. It's like it should be financed by long-term sources because it's always there. You don't have to worry about when uh, it won't be there. And that additional level is called the fluctuating current assets. So by fluctuating current assets, we mean uh, the changes in the level of current asset that arises through, let's say, uh, the business dynamics. The business has gone up and then it increases through unpredictability of business operations, such as a rise in the level of trade receivables, let's say due to some customers paying late, things like that, and uh, everything gets fine. So uh, we just go, there are a lot of explanations here, but uh, simply speaking, uh, working capital financing policy is based on the matching principle. By matching principle, take a look. Uh, under the normal situation, under the, policy that is neither, neither aggressive nor conservative, we would expect long-term assets to be financed by long-term funds and the short-term assets to be financed by short-term funds. But we'll take a look and see how this is really done. So the matching principle hold that long-term assets should be financed from a long-term source of finance and the short-term from the short term term, All right? Now, as I told you, non-current assets and the permanent current assets should therefore be financed from long-term source, such as equity or bond, that is non-current liability. I think I already illustrated this, while fluctuating current assets should be financed from a short-term source, such as an overdraft or short-term bank loan. Actually, this could be, would be stated in the question, so uh, no problem. All right, now we're just close uh, to taking a look to uh, our three ways aggressive, conservative, as well as moderate, all right? So in working capital financing policy, we look at how fluctuating current assets and the permanent are matched to short-term and long-term sources of finance. You just need to note one thing, non-current assets should obviously be financed from long-term sources. Our main concern here is on current assets, which we have subdivided into fluctuating, that is short-term, and the permanent, that is long-term. All right, so by starting with an aggressive financing policy, how do we go about this? An aggressive, as I told you before, means that if, if the policy is aggressive, that means you need high returns. High returns mean high risk. High risk means that I have the low level of current assets, but here we do not speak of the level of current assets. We speak of the way of funding. So an aggressive financing policy means that fluctuating current assets and a portion of permanent current assets are financed from a short-term finance source, finance source. Why did I say something like this? By, by saying an aggressive policy, we mean a high return and so a high risk. So between short-term and long-term sources, short-term sources are high risk, are of a high risk than long-term sources. So you have to stick to that point. I'm repeating again. By saying aggressive, we mean a high return, but also a high risk. By a high risk, we just take a look between long-term and short-term sources of finance. Short-term sources are a high risk than long-term sources. And that's why we say fluctuating current assets and just a portion of permanent current assets are financed from short-term source. So an aggressive financing policy would be more profitable, although much riskier. As I told you, more profitable means more return. Now, it is more risky because short-term finance is riskier than long-term finance, all right? There have just been a repetition, so this is what I meant. So for example, an overdraft, you know, an overdraft is a short-term process of finance and it is repayable on demand. Whenever the bank uh, needs uh, its funds, it will take it directly mm -hmm. from your account. So that's why you say short-term sources of finance are much riskier. Don't worry, I'll put a summary at the end, all right? So as opposed to the aggressive policy, when we speak of the conservative financing policy, it's the opposite. I'm repeating the same concept from the working capital investment policy. When saying you are conservative, that means you just you are just ready for a low risk. When just being ready for a low risk, uh, if you if you have if if you are ready for a low risk, that means between long-term and short-term sources of finance, I told you short-term sources are where 
have a higher risk and long-term sources have a lower risk. That means permanent current assets and a portion of fluctuating current assets are financing from a long-term source and the rest is financing from the rest of the fluctuating current assets should be financed from a long from a short term source. It is less profitable, as I told you, it has a lower return because the long term finance is expensive than the short term finance. So it's just like that. Short term source has a much more higher risk, but it is less expensive. But long term source is a lower, lower risk, but it is less expensive. It is more expensive. So. So it's just like that. And lastly, when speaking of the moderate financing policy, we, we, also, we can also call it matching policy, although not, not really. It's not necessary to say matching policy because this uh, can capital financing policy as a whole is based on matching. So it means that fluctuating current assets, which are, are truly short term, are financed by short term sources. While permanent current assets are financed by long term sources. Obviously, it's permanent current assets and the non current assets. But you know, we are speaking about in capital, and that's why we're not putting our non current assets a lot into this subject, right? So, you have not something like this. And maybe you have not something uh, before we end up this uh, chapter. So, the two policies are very different in terms of their meaning and their application. You know, you can have a company having a conservative working capital investment policy, but still form an aggressive working capital financing policy. It's very possible. On investment terms, it's conservative, but on financing terms, it's aggressive. All right, so it's just like that. So uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us. You can just subscribe uh, for regular updates. And then until next time.